Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Guman Singh. In our top story, through efforts such as the candlelight ceremony and call to action march, as well as public outcry on social media, the territory's residents have expressed strong concern over the death of Liana Saru and her sons Jordan and Jeremiah. Today, the young family was laid to rest, and volunteers from the search parties that were assembled early this month to look for the then missing family, as well as dignitaries and Liana's family, paid their respects. News 2's Stephanie Brown reports. At the Bethel Seven-Day Adventist Church in Williams Delight, over 300 residents that included elected officials, faith-based leaders, as well as supporters of the Siru family came to lay to rest Liana Siru and her two sons, five-year-old Jeremiah and 10-year-old Jordan, who were brutally murdered on the last weekend of July. The Virgin Islands medical examiner determined that all three deaths of this young family were in a status of homicide. However, the Virgin Islands Police Department nor the medical examiner has provided the public details on just how the family was murdered. At the funeral, the caskets were kept closed when Jordan and Jeremiah's bodies were found near the Haypenny Beach on Tuesday, August 1st. They were reportedly in a decomposed state. Liana Saru's body was found on Thursday, August 3rd, in a sister in an abandoned house behind the Mutual Homes community. A number of volunteers searched for the family when news got out that they were missing on Monday, July 31st. Malik Stradiran, a leader in the search efforts, along with Maxine Young and other community activists, were able to raise over $10,000 to go towards funeral arrangements. At the United Front, our community businesses and people from all around the world reach out to offer their help in search for Deanna, Jordan, and Jeremiah. Currently, there is a $50,000 reward provided by Brisa Max Holdings VI to be added to the Crime Stoppers reward pool. The Virgin Islands Republican Party is also offering rewards up to $5,000 for any credible information leading to the arrest and conviction of a person or persons responsible for the deaths of Liana and her two sons. For News 2... I'm Stephanie Shalana Brown. And we will have an update on the reward money being offered. It has been increased. Liana's closest friends and family members expressed that Liana felt strongly about her education and succeeding in life. The young mother reportedly had already enrolled at UVI to continue her studies to attain a master's degree. Condolences to the Saru family. On Thursday, August 24th, police say around 5.01 a.m., 22-year-old Glenn Ajani David and David Anthony Armstrong Jr. They were arrested pursuant to an arrest warrant by a Superior Court judge of the VI. And according to the reports, both Armstrong and David are charged for rape in the first degree and unlawful sexual contact. Police say on August 4th, 2017, a minor female stated that she went to a party at a residence in Frangipanji, Mambiju. She drank alcohol, went into one of the bedrooms to lay down when Glenn Ajani David and David Anthony Armstrong Jr. came into the room and raped her. No bail was set as per the DV statue. Armstrong and David was remanded to the Golden Grove Detention Center pending their advice of rights hearing. This case is under investigation by the Criminal Investigations Bureau DV unit. If you have any information on this case or any other crime, call the Criminal Investigation Bureau tip line 340-778-4950, 340-778-2211, Crime Stoppers VI at 1-800-222-TIPS or 911. The St. Croix District Office, located at uh, Sunny Isle Annex 14, the elections office, is effectively closed until further notice, they say, as they deal with an issue related to the release of gas from a generator cleaning. State Supervisor Carolyn Fox said they are working to resolve this issue and anticipate reopening on Monday, August 28th. They apologize for any inconvenience caused. Also, another closure to tell you about the legislature's post-audit public affairs annex located on Education Street was closed earlier today because of sewage leakage. The legislature, Waste Management Authority, and the landlord for the building are currently working together to resolve this issue. The Waste Management Authority will continue work on the location beginning at 6 a.m. on Friday and will advise the, the legislature's leadership on the status of the situation. In other news, 
Someone in the VI is officially a millionaire. On St. Croix, to be exact, now, did you purchase a ticket? Lottery officials are urging you to check those Powerball numbers carefully. Here is what you need to know. Did you purchase a Powerball ticket? Check it carefully. The winning numbers were 6, 7, 16, 23, and 26. Someone in the VI is a winner. Somebody won $2 million in yesterday's draw. Uh, we had one lucky winner in St. Croix. The person was able to match the first five numbers of the, the draw. And they also chose the power play option, which multiplied their winnings. So with the five numbers that they matched, they won a million dollars. And then with one extra dollar, three dollars in total, they were able to multiply their winnings by two uh, to two million dollars. The ticket was purchased on St. Croix. This is not the first time a winner has been announced in the VI. You know, the last time that we had another $2 million winner was back in 2016. We had a gentleman by the name of Mr. Philip Morris who won $2 million the same way, match five and the power play option. This announcement is sure to boost Powerball sales. If you, you can go into a retailer and collect a play slip. On, on a play slip, you have five opportunities to, to play. And um, you select five of 69 numbers and one of 26. If, if you don't want to do that manually, you can always have the retailer select the quick pick option on the terminal, which will allow the machine to pick the numbers for you. Well, each Powerball play is $2. So it's $2 to, to play the game, and one, if you want to multiply your winnings, what you would do is uh, spend an extra dollar for $3, and that gives you the opportunity to multiply whatever your winnings are. If you want to start taking that chance, here's how. Go to the Caribbean Lottery website, and you can keep up to date on our games, our jackpots, and uh, information on how to play our games. And, um, you know, play responsibly. And just remember that a portion of every dollar sold goes towards good cause beneficiaries within the community, such as GERS, the Pharmaceutical uh, Fund, the Education Initiative Fund, and the Office of Veterans Affairs. Now, nationally, Powerball Product Group Chair Charlie McIntyre said in a statement that several other tickets also struck gold. Six tickets sold in Connecticut, Illinois, Louisiana, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and of course the Virgin Islands won $2 million each. 34 others across the United States won $1 million. Powerball is played in 44 states, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Now, turning stateside, what would you do if you had hundreds of millions of bucks coming your way? The lot free winner in Massachusetts told her boss, I'm not coming back. Mavis Wanks won the $759 million Powerball jackpot Wednesday night, and that's the largest single ticket lottery win in U.S. history. When she came to claim her prize Thursday, she spoke about the first thing she wants to do. I just happened to find out, I was at work, I was leaving work at night, and I leave with, a, um, with, with this guy, Rob, he's a chicken wee fireman, and we just happened to walk out, and he said, I bet you somebody won with these numbers with birthdays, and I went, oh, yeah, I know, it's never going to be me, it's just a pipe dream I've always had, and he's reading these numbers, and I pull mine out, and I go, hey, I have that, I, I have that. I have that. He goes, let me see that ticket. He goes, you just won. I go, you're joking. Come on, please. He says, sign that ticket now. <laughs> and I couldn't drive anywhere. I couldn't do anything. So he followed me, actually, to make sure I was safely home. Turn our attention back here at home. The Finance Committee met in St. Croix to hear testimony on the University of the Virgin Islands and the UVI Technology Park. The committee also heard testimony on the Office of the Collective Bargaining, Licensing and Consumer Affairs, and the Public Works Department. We will have more in tomorrow's newscast. Well, the 1F Louis Hospital, they provided a response to Senator Hansen's allegations that we aired yesterday, where Senator Hansen informed that residents informed her that they were forced to ID the body of a loved one in the back of the hospital at a dock of the morgue, which is adjacent to large garbage disposal units, which the senator stated 
she was undignified. Now, just before news time, one of Louis released statements informing that the body of that individual was under the jurisdiction of the Department of Justice when it was reviewed by the family. Further, one of Louis one of Louis informed that the VIPD demanded a member of the deceased to ID the body. One of Louis provided a memo issued on August 1st, which states the DOJ is permitted to use a designated space in the morgue for persons to identify bodies under their jurisdiction. Be sure to count on two. We will keep you updated on that. While the Wall Street Journal reports the White House will send guidance to the Pentagon on the ban in the coming days. U.S. officials tell the newspaper Trump wants the military to stop admitting transgender people. And for current troops, the Pentagon should consider a service member's ability to deploy before deciding whether to expel them. Trump announced on Twitter last month that he would reinstate a ban on transgender troops. That reversed the policy, which was under final review at the Pentagon, that would have allowed transgender people to openly serve. The White House has not commented on the reports. Keeping our eye on the economy, health insurance prices are increasing for new retirees. Couples retiring this year will need roughly $275,000 saved up to cover their health care costs during re re retirement. That's up 6% from last year. And those costs are expected to keep rising. Experts at financial services company Fidelity released the estimates this week, they say each situation is unique and a couple's health, life expectancy and retirement age could change projected expenses. Taking a look at the numbers, we can see everything down. The Dow 28, Nasdaq 7, S&P 500 also down. Coming up on News 2, we have some back-to-school news for you as well as our immunization recognition. What adults need to know to continue their immunization. That's coming up next. back at the VIA Customer Experience Center on St. Croix. VIA's CEO, Alvaro Pilar, hosted an after-hours event entitled Tech Talk with VIA. It was for business and residential customers. The new technology will provide speeds up to one gigabyte per second. The event included food, drinks, live music, and a demonstration on the new and faster available speeds. Yes, what we did is something that we only had for some few uh, business customers where we used to install fiber and a fiber optical terminal, that was a one gig service, which is 1,000 meg, which is one billion bytes. That's a lot of speed. So what we did is we found this product and we deployed it in our network. Where for a very modical fee, we can provide gig internet to residentials or to small business. We did a demo today where we could download a two gig picture in 12 seconds. And that's amazing, you know, you think about it. And that service now is a, a, it's reachable for everybody. Everybody can have it on their home. We have the same technology as New York, we have the same technology as LA here in the island. And it's reachable and it's, a, it's accessible for everybody here. Um, definitely. I mean, uh, having that much more speed available on the island would definitely be an interesting thing for us. So it's probably something we'll take advantage of in the future. Um, we've had Valaya services for a while, um, and we've had no issues with them. So it's definitely something I'll investigate. Well, I mean, what Vaya is offering is nice, and it's a long time coming for the Virgin Islands. So being able to provide fast uh, internet access to the home, fiber to the home, I mean, that's, a, that's, that's what me as a technology person has always envisioned and hoped for here. So I, I'm very hopeful and, and uh, that or would like it to be a success. So uh, it's good, it's good. This service is fit for you. We're going to make it and we're going to design it for you. It's going to be tailor-made for each person, and I think that's the secret or that's the importance of a local provider like us to be able to do that for the local people. We're going to tailor the service, we're going to see what your needs are, and we're going to tailor the right service for you. Time for some back-to-school news. The St. Croix Central High School has announced their orientation. It's student ID scheduled for the school year that will be held right at the school during the designated times. They said students are asked to pay required school fees. Students must wear the uniform shirts to take the ID photos. 
And those are the dates there, Monday, August 28th from uh, 9 to 2, ninth graders. Tuesday, August 29th, 9 to 2, ninth graders. Wednesday, August 30th, it's from 9 to 2, 10th graders. And again on Thursday, 9 to 2, grade 11 and 12. Class schedules will be distributed on the first day of school, which is Tuesday, September 5th. The Juanita Gardin Elementary School, they have also announced their orientation for incoming kindergartners and new and transfer students on Tuesday, September 5th at 8 a.m. in the school auditorium. All returning students and their parents are asked to report directly to their assigned classrooms at 7.50 a.m. to meet with teachers and fill out demographic forms. The school-wide assembly will be held at 9 a.m. Beginning on Monday, August 28th, parents, guardians, they're welcome to purchase the school accident and PE shirt as well. Now the Janie Twitt primary, primary School, their orientation will be held during the week of August 28th to 31st from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the school's library. The school's welcome orientation, open house, and opening PTSA meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, September 27th. You can call the schools for more information. UVI is launching a public phase of the $25 million campaign for the campus. Through the campaigning, the university will raise funds to promote the excellence in teaching for facilities and infrastructure and for campus programs. Now, the public phase of the campaign will launch at 5.30 p.m. Tuesday at the Reichel Center on St. Thomas and 4.30 p.m. September 13th on St. Croix. The silent phase of the campaign that was launched in 2010, that has raised uh, 17.5 million to date, according to UVI. Time for Immunization Awareness Month recognition. And as the experts say, it's never too late to vaccinate, even as adults need uh, booster shots as well. Here's why. Immunization Clinic, St. Thomas, St. John District. I bring you the final in a series of four immunization tips in support of National Immunization Awareness Month. Our final theme is adult vaccinations. There is a misconception among many adults that vaccines are just for children. The truth is you never outgrow the need for immunizations. Every year, tens of thousands of adults in the United States suffer serious health problems, are hospitalized or even die from diseases that can be prevented by vaccinations. Unfortunately, these events even occur right here in our territory. To celebrate the importance of vaccination throughout life, and to help remind adults that we need vaccines too. The Department of Health Immunization Program joins with local and national partners in recognizing August as the National Immunization Awareness Month. This is the perfect opportunity to make adults aware that we need to protect ourselves against diseases like flu, whooping cough, tetanus, shingles, and pneumonia disease, just to name a few. The specific vaccines adults will need are determined by factors like age, lifestyle, risk conditions, and previous vaccinations. All adults should talk to the healthcare professionals to make sure they are up to date with vaccines that are recommended for them. For more information, you can call your healthcare provider or the Department of Health Immunization Clinic in your area. Remember, from the cradle to the rocking chair, it's never too late to vaccinate. And we'd like to thank the Department of Health for sharing that information with us. Meanwhile, the department says the Zika surveillance report indicates that new confirmed cases among uh, pregnant women in the territory. The number of Zika confirmed uh, by lab testing is 1,024 since January 2016. 683 confirmed on St. Thomas, 89 on St. John, and 252 on St. Croix. Now again, that's, uh, the report indicates six new confirmed cases of Zika among pregnant women in the territory. Now, the department's public health preparedness program, they're hosting a Zika Action Day on Saturday at the Fort Christian parking lot on St. Thomas. The free fun day will include costumed characters, 
rides, fun and games, foods and drinks on sale, lots of information about Zika and prevention. And that again is from uh, noon to 6 p.m. at the Ford Christian parking lot in St. Thomas. If you purchased a ticket of the back to school, a ticket of the back to school lottery that was drawn early today, it features some tips to make sure you and your little ones are all set for a successful school year. One in eight people who play the VI lottery are winners. You can win cash for education, travel, home improvement, or paying off bills. Every ticket has a chance to win a big part, including the top prize of $175,000. If you didn't win the Powerball, maybe you're in luck with the VI lottery. Here are the winning numbers. Here are today's winning numbers for the VI lottery's drawing number 899 for August 24th, 2017. For fifth prize and $20,000, the number is 10212. Fourth prize and $30,000, the number is 30409. Third prize and $40,000, the number is 19180. Second prize and $65,000, the number is 16906. And the grand prize for $175,000, the number is 6174. That's 6174. The next VI Lottery drawing is September 7th. Play the VI Lottery and imagine the possibility. Check those tickets. Stick around, your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next. Well, as we take a look here, it's been pretty active across parts of the Caribbean with Harvey that has gone across the windwards and the southern leewards. And then also we have 92L off here uh, to the east. Now for the Virgin Islands today, you had an absolutely gorgeous day and very nice for this evening and into tonight. However, with Harvey continuing its path uh, to the west there, some moisture gets drawn up and then 92L is actually going to be passing just to the northeast for tomorrow night. So that is going to bring our most active period of showers is going to be for tomorrow night through Sunday as we kind of just have the moisture between those two systems. And you can see our estimated radar clearly. It's been nice across the Virgin Islands. The real problems have been for the windwards and the southern leewards. But for tonight, for our area, mostly clear. Beautiful evening, a very nice night with a temperature of 80 degrees. For St. John tomorrow, we're going to see a couple of brief afternoon showers. And as I mentioned, the increased activity comes tomorrow night and then on Sunday as well. 89 degrees in St. John, 89 in St. Thomas with a couple of brief afternoon showers and more clouds starting to come in. In St. Croix, more clouds with some brief showers around for the afternoon with a high of 90. And on the uh, Atlantic side, we do have a small craft advisory from late tonight and that's through Saturday evening. Waves 6 to 8 feet with an easterly wind of 15 to 20 knots. On the Caribbean side. Small craft advisory remains in effect until Saturday evening with waves of 6 to 8 feet and we have those easterly winds at 15 to 20 knots. So looking at the forecast here, uh, we are going to see a couple of brief afternoon showers. Clouds starting to come in and then for Saturday night and Sunday, that's when we'll see the most numerous showers uh, in the area. High temperature on Sundays at 87 degrees. Then on Monday, we have a couple of spotty showers with a temperature of 90. Just a few spotty showers around on Tuesday in the upper 80s. Sandy? Thanks for that. Time for our weather picture there by Kiana Pittman, Pittman of uh, Lockhart Elementary School first grader sharing some of those raindrops we can expect like you say, on that scale, light to heavy. Kiana, great colors. Thank you for that. Send us your news weather picture to the address on the screen and tune in to see it. Stick around. Much more straight ahead. News to sports comes your way next. I'm Gary Anthony and this is News 2 Sports. The Paradise Jam Summer Tour continues to bring quality college basketball to the court at the UVI Sports and Fitness Center. And in a freak occurrence, 
The scores of both games were the same yesterday. In the early game, the Carlton Ravens, led by Eddie Ekior's 21 points, took an early lead over the Vanderbilt Commodores en route to an 81-74 victory. Maxwell Evans was the high scorer for the Commodores, with 19 points on 5 for 8 shooting from beyond the arc. In Game 2, the Northern Colorado Bears tipped off versus the Brock Badgers. The Bears were up by 15 points at one point. Here is a nice leaner by Jordan Davis, who had 31 points. And a couple of sweet jumpers by Andre Spite, who finished with 21. For the Badgers, the nice reverse layup by Danny Elgati, he had 22. And the layup by Tyler Brown, who clocked 18. However, the Bears would be victorious by, you guessed it, a score of 81 to 74. Tonight, where we won, we just really wanted to focus on, you know, what we do. I mean, we always talk about our guys doing their job, because, um, you know, in this type of setting, you know, you're not going to have a great scouting report in terms of what guys really do on the other team, but we figure if we just worry about ourselves and what we do, then, you know, the score will take care of itself. Oh, I, I really love it out here. It's, uh, it's a really good experience, you know, everybody's really friendly, and um, they're really nice, and it's just the food is amazing. It's definitely beautiful. I see myself like in the near future just bringing my family out here, vacation. Um, I love like all the stuff that we've been doing in the ocean, like going to the beach. Uh, we did a scuba diving yesterday, so I re really enjoyed that and, and I just enjoy the culture. First time in the Virgin Islands and uh, it's, uh, it's a beautiful place. Um, something that our guys have been really looking forward to for a year now knowing that this is where we were going to come. We had an opportunity to go to Europe but we felt like uh, you know being on the beach uh, in the Virgin Islands at St. Thomas uh, is it was the best thing for us and, and we've loved it. From the rim to the ring, the professional boxing debut of Clayton Laurent Jr. versus Wayman Carter is tomorrow at the Antilles School MCM Center. Clayton entered today's weigh-in at Havana Nines in the Yacht Haven Grand to cheers and shouts of encouragement. After weighing in at 270 and a half pounds, the USVI 2016 Olympian posed for photos amid more cheers. Now, his bout is one of four on Saturday night's fight card, and we will have highlights and more on News 2 Sports on Monday. That's it for sports. Have a fabulous weekend, everybody. Sandy, back to you. Thanks for those highlights. We wish our boxers well. That's all for now. On behalf of all of us here, have a wonderful weekend. I'm Sandra Dumansing. We'll see you next time.